All right, guys, I just wanted to show you real quick a video clip using the 90 millimeter f2.8 macro lens here in the lab on this new cool model train I got. Let's check it out. Hey, buddies. So what we got here is the Sony FE 90 millimeter f2.8 macro G OSS lens. And what that translates into is basically a full frame E mount telephoto macro lens with optical steady shot inside. Being a macro lens, this has one to one magnification with a minimum focus distance of only 11 inches. It also features a direct drive supersonic wave AF motor which is the latest and greatest Sony technology for fast, quiet autofocus. This lens has a total of 15 elements in 11 groups, a spherical, ED, and super ED glass. And they also feature the latest and greatest nano AR coatings from Sony. The build quality of the 90mm macro lens is very good, and uh, it feels like brickish and beefy in the hands. The weight of it is 1.32 pounds, or 602 grams. The lens is also dust and moisture resistant. For physical buttons, we have the focus hold button, the focus range limiter switch, which is actually a three-stage design, quite powerful, and there's also a optical steady shot on and off. In addition to that, the focus ring actually slides back and forth to engage manual focus and autofocus. All right, so let's mount her up to my A7R and show you what this thing can do. So here we are in the lab. This is at f2.8, and I just wanted to show you the sharpness and quality of this lens. And you can see here on the bungee cord, it's just incredibly sharp. Same thing with the detail here on the uh, pipe cleaners and crayons. Look at this. This is a raw file completely unedited at f2.8. Here's the very corner, and you can see there's just a little bit of purple fringing, but again, raw file, unedited raw file. And you can see the sharpness does fall off a little bit when you go to the corner. I mean, that's understandable. In the very corner. I focused over here on this stuff. So let me just go through here and show you a few different apertures. So here's f2.8, here's f4, here's f5.6, and here's f11. Uh, moving on, I want to show you the minimum focus distance, and you can see at f2.8, it just butters right out. I mean, the, you can't even tell that this is a lab scene in the background, and the focus is right down here somewhere. It's hard to see, but you could see how thin the depth of field is. So I just wanted to show you quick f5.6 and then f11. And now this isn't at the minimum focus distance, but it does show you um, the depth of field quite well. I just wanted to show you this again. It's a pretty cool lab scene, I thought. So here's f2.8, here's f4, and here's f16. Here's another f2.8 shot. Here's f8, and here's a completely out of focus. So you can see what that light looks like, you know, rendered completely out of focus. The light on the front of the train, see that? All right, and here is the color chart in the lab. And you can see it just looks brilliant to me. Sony a7R, you gotta love it. And then I took some coins. We're uh, on the forum, we're going crazy with coins. Uh, one of our members, Gramps, started a awesome thread, you know, coins of the world. So everybody from around the world is sharing their, you know, currency, and it's, it's uh, going quite well. So anyway, I was just taking some shots playing around here, and uh, coins are, are excellent for showing sharpness detail. And this one looks pretty cool, I thought. We'll just zoom in here so you can see this a little closer. I actually edited this one a little bit, so it has a little bit of uh, sharpness and whatnot. And you can see the the highlights are you know really bright. Uh, this could be done a little bit better, but I was just fooling around using two light sources, and um, you know pushing the raw file pretty hard. I also wanted to show you quick what the lab looked like when I was taking the picture of that coin. And this is what it looked like. This is how close the camera and lens was to the actual coin. You could see right here the coin itself. Here's a better shot. So from the front of the lens right here, 
um, to the coin was approximately 11 inches because I had it at the minimum focus distance. All right, so moving on to the real world photography a little bit here. I wanted to show you how this lens performs, you know, trying to use it as a portrait lens, for example. And uh, in my opinion, it, it does a decent job, but the bouquet in the background there, it, it's kind of messy and looking, you know, it just doesn't have that um, same look as when you're in macro mode. When you're in macro mode, the bouquet is really buttery. Um, it looks great. In this mode, um, you know, as a portrait, it looks more like, to me anyway, like a zoom lens or something like that. It just doesn't have that buttery um, bouquet. Um, that being said, it, it still does look good. I mean, the sharpness and whatnot, I mean, everything else is excellent. You can see, it looks great. Quality is fantastic. But, um, you know, I'm just referring specifically to, you know, the separation here. Um, you know, because a lot of people are debating on whether to get the Batis 85 millimeter lens. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but the Zeiss BATIS lens. They have an 85 millimeter f1.8 lens. It's going to produce a much better out of focus area than this lens, in my opinion. Um, there's a few people on YouTube that are comparing them and things like that, so you can see. But uh, this is just me speaking from experience uh, using, you know, the super high quality Zeiss lenses. They just tend to have a better bouquet. And this lens is designed for macro photography. So that's where this lens will shine. You know, it's, it's not designed to shine with portraits. The Zeiss Battis lens is designed to uh, shine with portraits. So it'll do a great job in that regard. And the bouquet will be killer. So as you can see here, when in macro mode, though, the bouquet looks awesome. Um, this is just a very thin piece of plastic rope from Jace's baby swing. You could see the detail. It's incredible. It's another shot. Here's some flowers. And you can just see all the little pollen detail and stuff. Uh, it's very impressive. Super sharp. There's some more flowers. And in the background now, the bouquet looks killer. You know, this is what it should look like. You know, if you're taking a portrait, you'd expect this, but you don't get that with this lens because you can't. You're not going to get this close. You know what I mean? With the Zeiss lens, in my opinion, the background will look more buttery, like the, like this lens does here. Again, here's another cool shot. Some more flowers on the deck. I just wanted to give you a good example of what it looked like with the really good light. Let's see, it's very sharp. Very narrow depth of field. That's f2.8. Okay, here's a couple more shots of a spider. Daddy long leg. I'll zoom in and show you the detail on that. Look at this thing. This is the ISO 400. Here's another angle. I'm going to focus more on the flower here in the front. You can see his little fangs or whatever those things are tentacle things there's another frame and these are raw files too so once I edit it it'll look really good all right so just a few more shots I found here I wanted to show you this is just a flower on the deck it's a really small flower only about an inch in actual size and I just like the way that that turned out and here's shooting into the Sun behind a flower I wanted to show you what that looked like and here's an ant on the deck this is a flower I think it's a lily and the pollen here was just piled on made for great detail here's another daddy long leg uh, I took a dime picture oh here's another ant shot I wanted to show you the jaws on this thing nasty looking jaws I don't know what it was eating it was like a piece of cheese or something on the railing uh, kind of looked like bacon but the jaws were pretty impressive I thought here's another shot and this one I was using the AF and it did focus on the eye. Um, it took a couple of tries, but I was using the small AF. I actually cropped this and edited this image a little bit. But I was using the small flexible spot AF and I used it to focus on the contrast right here. And it did work. I was very impressed. I took multiple shots. I took like 20 different shots. All right, guys. So the bottom line with this lens is it's a must have. I mean, if you are a full frame E-mount camera user, and you don't have a macro lens yet, 
this is the one that you're going to want. You know, there's manual focus lenses that work great, like from Rokinon and whatnot. But if you want AF and optical steady shot built in and all the other killer features that this has, you know, you're going to have to pay the 1098, unfortunately. I wish it was only 998 but um, Sony did push it over the thousand mark. But it does have all the latest and greatest features. I mean, you can't fault it there. It has the best stuff. It's got the SSM motor, I mean, nano AR coatings, you know, high quality lens elements, supersonic wave motor, on and on. So, and plus the build quality is excellent. I mean, you know, across the board, you do get what you pay for with this product, in my opinion. Got some killer photos with my A7R, and that thing has a clunky, shutter mechanism so I tried to keep the shutter speed above 1 100th with with the uh, a7r and the OSS worked great all right guys thanks again for checking in and please feel free to ask questions comment below as always your support is also greatly appreciated links below and be sure to subscribe if you're not already